They have now been working on the first project, the quarry project, for two weeks. And during that time, um, there was a pinup. Um, then we asked them to do a first design at a very small scale that you see here of one project of this um, outside classroom, sheltered, out of the rain and the sun. You see the scale of the person to the total project. There was a pinup to criticize that project. And then we asked them to blow it up in scale, to quarter scale that you see here, and more detail. Uh, and revise at the same time based on the criticism that they received. And so in addition to the model that you see, we also asked them to make growings of sections and plans and details of their project. This is a typical one. Now, at this point we had a review where I asked people from offices around Boston as well as other faculty to come and criticize them. Um, so this was their very first review of exposing their work to other people. And what you're about to see is a typical review of what I call a one-on-one -on -one or small, uh, quiet discussions between one or two faculty and one student. It's my belief that it's more educational if you can not have the old style jury system, which was a number of faculty um, listening to the student presenting and then criticizing, which I don't think was too educational. This way is more quiet, but I think it's more, in, it's, it's fact that it's more informal uh, makes it more educational. I think students get more out of it. So you're about to see a typical uh, review of what I call one-on-ones, although you may find two faculty uh, or two people with one student. Basically, my project looks like um, that the entrance where you come from the trail is sort of about here, so that would be the movement as you come in. I think it's good that you both focused on seeing her idea um, about the site. I started out when she was a more sort of faddish and even form, now it's sort of or curvy and what nothing happened? really the geometric about it at all. Yeah. And yeah. I almost felt like so I was okay. sort of more squashy between blending it really and not. And so I didn't really feel like I was capable of duplicating anything that could compete with that. So I sort of took the approach of, well, I'm going to do something that's obviously not imitating, but still drawing on some of the principles that are really coming. If I were there, I know exactly where I'd be. I'm not saying anything about yours. But I, I like very much the way that it breaks down. I, 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 want, I chose to do it this way um, because I I love to see you was when you were with the big girl. You were just sort of like internal to the very own job. I don't know what you're doing. Um, so that's why I sort of tucked that back in there. Aside from the sort of the least distractions, the hairs. How does it not run? To the ground, sort of stays off and not really pay attention. Because I didn't really want to feel like I was, you know, competing. Like you're bringing these people to this beautiful place and then you're trying to, you know, do a whole lecture or presentation or something. And, and, you know, no matter how interesting what you're saying, somebody's going to find something more interesting to look at somewhere else. So I sort of kept that in plainness, private and close by, and then as the groups would sort of break off into whatever activities they were doing, I wanted to sit a little bit and sketch or read or think or anything that would be the time when you would be on the expansive view and you would interact with the water and stuff like that. So that was sort of my thinking behind it. I really like the feeling of being like on a dock, like walking out onto a dock. Being very conscious that I'm elevated above the water, I can feel the water beneath me. Um, so I sort of, I wasn't sure if I wanted to make all these like concrete, you know, blocks sort of like the wafers were just coming up in these shapes. Um, I wanted to do 
over here. Really uh, the fact that I'm looking down, the more I look at this, the more I'm looking down. I have to find this between the block on the upper table, so I have to get down to that area. Just because of the block. If you were standing on the platform, but all your drawings, whether it was rock under that, or that was falling down, I'm not sure because of the it is sort of one large surface. I'm not sure your experience would be. Yeah, I think you only experience that from far away, looking at the project, where it has a very definite, right now, a very definite vertical mm -hmm. element to it, or, for instance, if you're sitting down here, that, and you sort of look back, it's almost like this type, like, yeah, the back But it'd be relating to whatever notions I have. When I looked at this project, the first sort of before I had any idea of scale or before I saw your roof or anything, and I looked away, I remember thinking, were those roofs or were those platforms? And I think something very interesting about this support. I want to do you know, never know, quite know if, if something is a step or it's a seat or it's a ledge or it's going to give you shade. And, you know, and I think that something that's going to be very exciting about this project, because to, to me anyway, looking at it, it already almost has that. That could be very exciting about this that could also help you to touch a little bit more is if in some places your axe, if you didn't just have one axe, because otherwise it wouldn't work. But if you touch in a few different places, um, you could almost set up a system where, depending on how you explore this, you could use something as a roof or, or as a platform or as something that was on top of you, depending on where you accessed it and how you sort of went up and down. And you still could have some, some lighter things around, but I think that, I think that if you um, and, and, and then also this, this integration with this a little bit stops the sort of, uh, you know, I'm here alone with me kind of attitude a bit that seems to, you know, that although you were doing it, it seems to make sense as to what was there. Um, I think it does make it more of a stand on thing. So I would, I would be very excited to see more of this sort of thing happening. Which also relates to your idea of steps and architecture. You sort of said it already because you were talking about the architectural components in the landscape. So, you know, use them as architectural components. Use something as a base. I had a platform that sort of sat right here um, that would have acted as a roof for this main space. Um, it's really like right here. And then also you know, ground sort of thing, you could just walk right out to it. Um, and that, professors <laughs> critiquing <laughs> went away. Um, but I had initially sort of wanted that duality of you can be up top and you can be underneath at the same time. I mean, I could see on, on one side actually where that would be more suggestive and where that would become um, um, some of those groups who actually come to the platforms. Yeah, yeah. Actually, though, yeah. you both can do they all have any clusters? Yeah, things yeah. each yeah. other's yeah. That, what, that are sort of opposite of the that you described. Um, yeah. 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 I almost, you know, I'm saying more regular hand forms. I would almost expect it to be further away from that, where um, it caught your attention. But they, I would almost expect to find that are wrong. You want to pull the water up. Yeah, those things. Yeah, rather than right now we're going to take it and you come upon site and work your way down towards the water. Yeah, those level of interaction. You land at almost the water level, you sit down so that you're adjacent to the water. But you took away all of your built form. The goofy is the squarest. So it's almost like you can bother bring the water up above and they can really keep it up above mm -hmm. yes. rather than down below. So the next needs to be a baby or something else, but it's incredible to bring it to the water. Now push up further of, of really making a statement that your intention is to not find it on the right side of the web. But to sort of move away from it and get more and more.
But they are wondering whether or not they will move one the more platforms. Five minutes. Oh, but now it's my impression of it. Sorry, please. I'm sorry. Don't worry, we'll give you that. Sorry, please. I'm sorry. Don't worry, we'll give you that. Sorry, please. 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 My idea of a place for us to be in a toy was a place that had a sense of privacy. Um, I guess the program wanted a place for the class to be as well as places for individuals to be alone. And I wanted those places to have a sense of privacy. So um, in that same light, I didn't want to make something that was like enclosed, but I wanted a sense of enclosure for concentration purposes and shelter purposes. So, um, I guess my whole project is pretty much based on uh, an idea or, well, okay, this summer I was in China for two and a half months, and we went to a lot of bamboo forests, and we just had a sense of serenity inside of them, and so that's this is our initial collage of ideas. Um, one of the other things I noticed about the Koi was the sense of how there wasn't really a human scale to it. And like looking at the pictures. There was no human Yeah, no human. Okay. Um, in the sense that. I had some people who were trying to judge the distances and dimensions of the quarry, the pictures without humans in them, where I was sometimes, you know, half the measurement of the actual size of the pictures. I wanted to have, I guess my statement pretty much said that, but I um, wanted to have something that was bold and outstanding, like the quarry itself, but it was na natural in form without necessarily imitating nature. So, well, my initial idea was in the eighth inch model. I knew I wanted to have that. Another idea I was I wanted to incorporate into my design was the idea of the curve and how that simple gesture can serve the dual purpose of providing that space of interaction and course of what would be together. On the other side of the curve, and just on the other side, people are provided their privacy and independence against the wall. And the sun was coming around the corner this way, and so I like to put all your switches inside because of the way that. Koi provides a natural shelter and sense of security to me. Um, I think, for especially for a classroom setting, to be in such a vulnerable place along in any other place in the Koi, distracting. So I like the way I love how this is kind of hugging the side. And then all along here, along the outer ranks, there are a lot of different places where people have it. Across from the quarry, this is the site 
and you can see in the eight window model, it can be really striking to have these um, kind of frosted glass that the sun shines through, creating like a pattern. I think you're right in noting that, that this would necessarily be an all-weather sort of place. Um, rains in the interstitial spaces, you might not want to, um, you might not want to be there, so you have to over problems. But, and I would say, well, if it's just frost and glass, well, what is it doing? I, mean, I guess it, it, it'll diffuse the light a little bit, but, but it's not creating shade. If it's a really hot day, such as we had earlier this summer, so the idea of having different kinds of covering, Angela's idea of spreading it out some would, to, um, would allow you to take the idea that, that you brought back from China, but, but maybe make it a little more um, in keeping with, with you know, what the program would be here. It started from the inspiration of, of, of what you saw there, but it is was any kind of thing. Well, if you walked in Bamboo, you know it's, it's, it's a different sort of place than the quarry, and, and, and for a different sort of, of the experience there is different. You tend to walk through or something, you're not going to have a class here or in a studio or, or, or something. So it's requirements for shelter or something. It's, it's very similar, actually, to some of these plants growing up out of the rock. You have these, these columns coming out, seemingly coming out of the cracks in the, in the rock. Um, and like Angela said, I, I think breaking it up a bit would be beneficial. Or maybe there's different types of material that are above your head. I know when you walk into a grove of bamboo, it's actually quite dark in there because of the complexity of the leaves and the density of the leaves above your head. Um, so, if you broke this up a bit on the side and created different intensities of columns and, you know, maybe there's two or three types of roofing material, we call it, um, where you might create areas that are a bit darker, some a bit lighter, some maybe in the middle or wide open, um, or, you know, Another way could be that you change the experience of moving up from up high on the quarry down to the quarry, so you're passing through this kind of forest, and then finally you're back out um, in the opening. Uh, so I think adding those, that kind of diversity to the architecture would be beneficial.